Welcome to all firearm aficionados watching. My name is David. I'd like to present a short documentary film about a firearm used during the Vietnam War until the early 1980s by the United States Navy SEALs before it was replaced. Before I go on, I'd like to discuss a little bit about my firearms background. I have been involved in firearms all my adult life. I served in the U.S. military and I also shot competitively while in uniform. After leaving the service, I created two American military firearms websites, U.S. Army Rifles of the 20th Century and U.S. Military Combat Handguns of the 20th Century. While doing research for the second website, I began writing about the suppressed pistols used by the American GI and the Central Intelligence Agency. One of the suppressed pistols I wrote about for the second website is the focal point of this video. Introduced by Smith & Wesson in 1954, the newly commissioned U.S. Navy SEALs adopted it in 1962. As their missions increased during the Vietnam War, they asked Smith & Wesson to give them a pistol that they would be able to use to neutralize an enemy combatant, whether that combatant had two legs, four furry legs, or two webbed feet. This pistol, of course, is the iconic Smith & Wesson Mark 22 Mod Zero, better known as the Hush Puppy. Smith & Wesson Model 39 was developed during the rebirth of the pistol at the Springfield, Massachusetts Arms Makers Factory. During the mid-1910s, Smith & Wesson tried to design and market pocket pistols, namely the 35 Smith & Wesson and the 32 ACP Smith & Wesson, to compete against the previously introduced Colt Models 1903 and 1908 pocket hammerless pistols, along with a few other manufacturers' designs. While the designs performed well, the price of these pistols, plus the use of the proprietary 35 automatic caliber, made sales very limited. By 1936, Smith & Wesson went back to exclusively making revolvers. In 1951, during the Korean War, Smith & Wesson re-entered the pistol market with the introduction of the Model 41, a very high quality 22 long rifle caliber target pistol that is still in production today. After the Korean War was over, the U.S. Army became interested in a 9mm Parabellum replacement for the M1911A1 pistol, to adhere to the standardization agreements set forth by the newly formed NATO Alliance. With this starting point as a guide, Smith & Wesson engineers began working. While military interest in replacing the M1911A1 waned, Smith & Wesson unveiled its new 9mm pistol, the Model 39, in 1954. The Model 39 used an 8-shot magazine, a double-action trigger mechanism, and a Walther-style safety mounted on the pistol slide. Accurate and reliable, it was the first American-made double-action 9mm Parabellum pistol. While the American shooting public did not go wild for the Model 39, sales were slow but steady, which was a remarkable feat in a market flooded with surplus World War II arms. President John Fitzgerald Kennedy formally commissioned the Navy SEALs in 1962, the newly formed teams looked at all available arms, including the original AR-15s, before those rifles were adopted by the military as the M16 series of rifles and carbines. With a worldwide mission and a strong desire to buy American, the SEALs adopted the 9mm caliber Model 39 after having the civilian magazine safety and sear release lever removed. By 1966, however, SEAL teams deployed in Vietnam wanted a suppressed pistol with more power to silently dispatch both human and animal sentries around Viet Cong controlled villages, so the search began. A Central Intelligence Agency designed suppressor kit for the ubiquitous Walther P-38 featuring a suppressor with a hollow aluminum body with a wipe insert inside was evaluated and found to be just what was needed, as was the slide lock used to keep the P-38 slide from moving during firing, which reduced noise even further. It should be noted the mechanical noise associated with firing a firearm is one of three factors to be overcome to successfully suppress a pistol as much as possible. Attention now turned to the Model 39. The barrel was extended to 5 inches and threaded at the muzzle. Adjustable raised sights and plastic grips were added to the pistol, along with a crude but effective slide lock. The final piece of the puzzle was the subsonic Mark 144 
Mod Zero ammunition, a 9mm cartridge firing a 158 grain slug at 965 feet per second, which was initially developed by the Remington Arms Company but later produced by the Supervel Cartridge Corporation of Shelbyville, Indiana. The Navy also developed the Mark 26 Mod Zero Accessory Rebuild Kit. This kit had 24 rounds of Mark 144 Mod Zero ammunition, a new sealed wipe insert, a rubber barrel cap to protect the threaded barrel when the Mark III Mod Zero suppressor was not mounted, four chamber plugs with O-rings to waterproof the barrel chamber when the pistol was being transported underwater up to a depth of 200 feet, a back end chamber plug for sealing the threaded end of the Mark III Mod Zero suppressor when dismounted, and six inch and a quarter diameter by three eighths inch thick polyurethane discs which fit within a recess at the suppressor's muzzle to waterproof it. With these modifications, the Navy formally renamed these Model 39s as the Mark 22 Mod Zero. When the pistol had the Mark III Mod Zero suppressor mounted onto its barrel, the package was then called the Mark 23 Mod Zero Swimmer Weapon System, deployed to SEAL teams in late 1967 and normally used to silence a guard dog or goose outside of Viet Cong villages, the Mark 22 Mod Zero was nicknamed the Hush Puppy by SEALs happy to have the pistol win in enemy territory. The pistol was such an immediate success, any suppressed pistol was called a Hush Puppy for many years afterwards. The Mark 22 Mod Zero was used by the SEALs until the early 1980s when it was replaced by the Heckler & Koch P9S. And welcome back. I hope everyone learned a little bit about American military history and had some fun while doing it. The real reason for my video today is this. This is a 100% accurate replica of a Smith & Wesson Mark 22 Mod Zero Hush Puppy. Uh, just going to take you through all the parts. This was done by a gunsmith. I'll introduce you to him later on. Uh, we're just going to start at the muzzle and work to the back. Uh, first and foremost, I want to show that the pistol is empty. Taking out the magazine, it was empty. And being able to show you, pistol, that it is completely empty. So we are safe. So now going ahead from the muzzle, uh, this faux suppressor, this is fake, we live in Illinois here, uh, the suppressor originally had a recess in the front to accept a muzzle cap, and this was a polyurethane disc, inch and three quarter wide by three eighths of an inch thick deep, that was duplicated. Uh, the threading on the, on the suppressor may or may not have been uh, quite the original, but we went to a standardized threading which is seen on most uh, suppressors nowadays for 9mm, which is half inch by 28. The barrel is 5 inches long and it is threaded. Uh, the front sight and the rear sight wings were duplicated through reverse engineering them. Uh, you'll also see in the back that one of the things that we did is, uh, courtesy of the Navy, that because they, are, they normally had a magazine disconnect, you can actually squeeze the trigger on this piece and it will go off. So the magazine disconnect has been removed. Additionally, with the safety, it's also on, but then because of the originals that they affected the ha uh, sear, in order to drop the hammer, we elected to take that on out because that's exactly what the Navy SEALs had done to the pistol back 50 years ago. Uh, other than that, the slide lock here, it will go up into the lock position so you cannot pull the slide back. Uh, you put it on down to rack a new round into the chamber. Uh, additionally, that this pistol, I'm going to spin it around on over here, putting in the magazine, if this had no rounds in the magazine, there is no way for that magazine to hold the slide open. So that last round, when it was fired, would just go automatically back into battery. So you'd have to be aware of your round count uh, when you're doing things. But when you're only firing one round at a time at a target, I don't think you're going to have any kind of issue with it. I was reminded to talk a little bit more about the slide lock. Let me push this into slide lock. Uh, mode right here. This prevents the pistol from going back because this barrel is a browning type oscillating barrel. When you have a weight on the end of it, it will cause the gun to jam. We will demonstrate that later during the firing portion. But then because the Navy SEALs, you need to have maximum uh, silence and suppression when you were in uh, going into a Viet Cong village at 2 a.m. in the morning, you want to be able to have it as quiet as possible. And a mechanical noise on a pistol 
will cause some of your uh, problems that you can hear with a pistol. So uh, that's the one of the three factors. You have the mechanical noise, and then you have two factors that are taken care of by the ammunition. So as you can tell, when it's locked, it's locked. So we'll see that during the firing portion. Uh, other than that then, uh, if someone needed to take a look at the pistol or to reload it after firing on their one target, whether it happened to be human, animal, or fowl, then they would turn around, drop the slide lock off, and manipulate it back. One more key point that I wanted to show you is, is this. I know it's a very small piece and you're not going to be able to see it real well, but then this is a duplication of the chamber plug that was used by the SEALs. Uh, normally when they were transporting the gun, you, they'd have no ammunition in it, but they would have this piece in the chamber of the barrel uh, in order to preclude any water from getting in up to a depth of 200 feet. So in combined with the chamber plug back in the chamber of the barrel, and you have the muzzle cap which is in the front of the suppressor, that would totally waterproof the pistol up to a depth of 200 feet. It's an ingenious type of device. Uh, this was really well ahead of its time. Okay, and I'd like to introduce you to the true genius uh, behind this pistol. This is Tim the gunsmith who did the work here at Maxon. Uh, I did all the reverse engineering of the parts, uh, basically taking measurements off a computer screen to duplicate the parts, but then this is the man is the genius behind the mill who's making all the parts work. So Tim, was there any kind of real aspects of this pistol that were difficult for you at all? Well, the minute you start welding on the slide, you can need a load parts. So we had to re heat treat the entire slide back to back to spec, which are not given by Smith and Morrison anymore. So we had to do a little bit of guessing and science. Okay. Um, and then uh, did you feel that the idea that we both came up with to have the slide lock 3D printed first was actually a good one? Well, it proved the point that it was spot on, the dimensions were proper, and so we were ready to go right into manufacturing with it. Okay, uh, any other aspects of the pistol that you felt were difficult for you to work with or did you feel that this was actually pretty easy? No, I mean, it's fairly easy. Just, you know, go and try and make one. You'll find out <laughs> there is some difficulty, but it's not impossible. I could, I could say that again. Tim, I want to thank you. Sure, Dave. Thank you again. And I think, folks, wouldn't you like to be able to uh, learn what the impressions are from somebody who's never picked up the pistol? I think we're going to turn it on over to that person right now. I'd like to introduce you to a gentleman I've known close to 35 years. His name is Keith. He's a championship caliber shooter uh, in the military. And this is the first time he's ever seen uh, this Hush Puppy replica in person. So Keith, go ahead and take it away. Just go ahead and pick it up and tell us what you think of it. Sights custom? Sights are completely custom. Well, the rear sight is uh, actually the exact same sight from the second and third generation of Smiths that it was invented by a gentleman by the name of Dwayne Charon. Uh, he did this for the Hush Puppy, but then Smith & Wesson was able to take those sights and use them on other pistols. So they really got their money's worth out of the Hush Puppy program. So it's like it's designed to fire with the slide locked in place? Yes, that is correct. Single shot? It's single shot at that point, if you want to call it a single shot repeater, that if you wanted to, you can take the slide lock off, you can manually rack the slide to put in a new round. The only thing it will not do, as uh, you saw before, is to not lock the slide back at the last round. You can lock it manually. And the slide lock is one solid piece? Yes, it is. Well, it's two. It's actually two separate <coughs> sections. You have a right half and the left half, which you see on the one side there. So basically, each side of the slide is locked together at the moment of fire. This is all science silencer. Uh, that's just a solid piece of aluminum, since we are here living in the Illinois Democratic Republic. So it's just a foam <laughs> suppressor. Very nice. Now, Keith, we're at that point. How would you like to take that thing on out to the range? Up to. Okay, then. Okay, folks, it's now the time all you maniacs have been waiting for is now for a live fire demonstration. First off, I want to show you, though, that the pistol has no magazine in, and the chamber is empty. So now what we are going to do is we're going to take a magazine right here. It only has five rounds in it. Uh, these rounds are made by Kiyoshi. 
These are the Ochi Diamond 158 grain full metal jacketed rounds. These are our target rounds, but these are as close to the approximation as what was to the original uh, Mark 144 by zero ammunition as used by the Navy SEAL during Vietnam. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn around, I'm going to take the pistol, I am going to load it up, I'm going to put in one round, I'm going to take off the slide box. And I'm going to put on the safety. Slide lock is off. I'm putting it down in the deck. And now I'm going to get my hearing on, because now Keith is going to come on over and fire five rounds, semi-automatic, without the without the full suppressor on it. So Keith, come on over. It's all set. Just take off the safety and you can fire. Replica of a 
Smith and Wesson, Mark 22, Mind Zero Hush Puppy, fired with a full suppressor in place. Imagine one day when somebody does a video on their own copy that has a real suppressor on it, on how quiet it will be. But all I can say is, I salute the Navy SEALs, and thank you again.